Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the accident that happened on board the 269 foot super yacht Kibo, which sadly resulted in the loss of life of one of their deckhands. So I'm going to be reading through the accident report which was issued by the maritime authorities of the Cayman Islands. I'm going to pick up the report from um, point 2.2. .2. If you'd like to read the report after you watch the video in full, I'll put a link to it in the description. So 2.2, .2, we're picking up uh, in the report the day of the accident. Um, just prior to the accident. As was the normal practice when guests were on board, the workday started early. The owner was expected to rise at around 0600, so the chief officer started work around 0530. Many of the crew had also arisen early to watch a world title boxing match on satellite TV. With guests on board, the work consisted of cleaning the exterior of the yacht and preparing various equipment and facilities for use by the guests during the day. As the owner and his guest did not arise at 0600 as expected, the atmosphere was relaxed and the work was progressing well. The deckhand started work at 0900 and joined the rest of the crew already working on deck. The deck officers and other deck crew members on duty at the time were the chief officer, the third officer, the lead deckhand and three other deckhands. The deckhand was joined by the third officer and the chief officer to discuss working arrangements for the day. The weather was fine and the sea extremely calm with a sea temperature of 19 degrees Celsius. It was decided that this would be a good opportunity to clean the stainless steel parts of the rubbing strakes, referred to on board as the rub rails, attached to the yacht's hull. The rub rails are located just below the main deck level, approximately three meters above the waterline. It was agreed that the deckhand would perform the work under the supervision of the third officer and chief officer. The intention was to clean the rub rails on both sides of the hull, commencing with the rub rail on the port side. A permit to work to cover the work was issued and signed by the third officer as the responsible officer. The permit to work form completed for this work required the use of safety shoes and a safety harness when carrying out the work. However, the completed permit to work form did not require a life jacket or other buoyancy aids to be worn. At 10.02, the deckhand made his way to the port side main deck and donned the safety harness in preparation for commencing the work. He was joined by the third officer who checked the fitting of the safety harness and attached the bosun's chair. The safety harness was to be attached to a fender hook on the port side boardwalk by a rope fitted with an ascender descender device for controlling the working position of the wearer. The deck can then change into appropriate footwear for working over the side while the third officer checked the fender hook and rope which are already in place on the port side boardwalk. The arrangement of safety harness bosun's chair, support line, fender hook, comprised the deckhand's means of support, and no additional safety line was rigged. At 10.09, the deckhand climbed over the boardwalk to stand on the rub rail and moved forward until he was positioned outboard of the fender hook and supporting line. The third officer then rigged the support line into the fender hook and attached the free end of the line to the safety harness. After confirming that the deckhand was able to properly work the ascender descender device, the third officer collected a bucket containing rags and polish to be used in cleaning the rub rail. The bucket was passed over the bulwark to the deckhand who clipped it to the safety harness. The deckhand then commenced cleaning the rub rail while the third officer attended some minor housekeeping tasks in the area. The third officer was in full communication with the deckhand and monitoring his progress. At 10.21, the third officer was called away from the work site to take a party of guests ashore in the yacht's tender. Before leaving the area, the third officer confirmed that the deckhand was comfortable and had no concerns over the work being undertaken. Over the next 10 minutes, several crew members walked past the work site 
without interacting with the deckhand who was working out of sight below the bulwark. At 10.32, the chief officer arrived at the work site to check on the deckhand. As the chief officer was not present when the third officer demonstrated the use of the ascender descender device, she asked the deckhands to demonstrate its proper operation. Satisfied that the deckhand was proficient in its use and that the deckhand had no other concerns, the chief officer left the work site to fetch some sunscreen for the deckhand. The chief officer returned with the sunscreen, which she passed to the deckhand before leaving to attend to an issue elsewhere on deck. Over the next 15 minutes, the chief officer made further checks on the deckhand. At 10.50, the deckhand returned to deck level and repositioned the fender hook aft by sliding it along the bulwark while standing on the rub rail. Towards the end of this repositioning, he was joined once again by the chief officer. At 10.56, the third officer returned from shore in the tender. At 10.57, the chief officer returned to the work site and witnessed the fender hook detaching from the bulwark with the deck hand still attached to the fender hook by the supporting line. Now we're going into the post accident response. As soon as the chief officer realized that the deck hand had fallen from the work site into the sea, she moved to the bulwark and established visual contact with the deckhand. The deckhand was seen on the surface of the water as he started swimming slowly towards the stern of the yacht. The deckhand was described as looking shocked but aware of his surroundings. When asked if he was okay, the deckhand nodded to the chief officer. The chief officer then asked again and again the deckhand nodded. The chief officer then told the deckhand that she was going to get another crew member to enter the water to assist the deckhand to swim back to the stern of the yacht. At the stern of the yacht, there was a platform with a swim ladder already deployed. The chief officer then moved after the swim platform, breaking visual contact with the deckhand. On arrival at the swim platform, the chief officer told one of the deckhands, deckhand alpha, that the deckhand had fallen into the water and needed assistance in getting back to the yacht. Deckhand Alpha then entered the water and started to swim towards the location where the deckhand was last seen. Deckhand Alpha could not see the deckhand on the surface of the water. The time between the chief officer leaving the worksite and deckhand Alpha entering the water was 29 seconds. When the deckhand could not be seen on the surface of the water, the seriousness of the situation became apparent to all involved. A second deckhand, deckhand Bravo, entered the water to assist deckhand Alpha. At the same time, the third officer ran from the swim platform to the work site. On arrival at the work site, the third officer stood on the bulwark and searched for the deckhand in the water. The third officer was joined at the bulwark by the remaining deckhand on duty, deckhand Charlie. The third officer had sight of the deckhand below the surface of the water and dived from the main deck bulwark to try and reach the deckhand. By this time, the chief officer had raised the alarm throughout the yacht and all crew began to muster. The master was in the crew mess when the alarm was raised and immediately made his way to the swim platform. Amongst mustering the crew members, one of the stewardesses, who was a fully qualified nurse, took charge of the medical response to the emergency. Once the master and nurse were in attendance on the swim platform, the chief officer left the scene and proceeded to the bridge to alert the shoreside authorities. She made a general distress call on the yacht's VHF radio, which was answered by MRCC Palmer and ambulances were arranged. So MRCC is Maritime Rescue Coordination Centre. The third officer was unable to reach the deckhand from the surface of the water and the deckhand was lost to sight below the surface. While attempts at rescue were being attempted by the crew members in the water, preparations were underway to search for and recover the deckhand by a scuba equipped diver. Scuba gear was prepared and donned by the master who entered the water in search of the deckhand. The deckhand was located lying face down on the seabed and brought to the surface by the master. Once on the surface, the deckhand was brought on the yacht at the swim platform 
and handed over to the care of the nurse who was being assisted by other crew members. The elapsed time from the deckhand falling from the work site until first aid had commenced on the yacht was 13 minutes and 23 seconds. So the reason they know the exact timing of, of all this is the yacht has CCTV with timestamps so they can go back, watch over CCTV and see all the timing and unfortunately all the events leading up to it. So continuing onboard medical response. When the alarm was raised by the chief officer, the nurse was alerted by a radio call from the chief stewardess. On being informed that the deckhand was in the water and had been lost to sight, the nurse immediately made her way to the portside main deck locker and collected a crash pack and a medical oxygen kit, then made her way to the swim platform. On arrival at the swim platform, she noted persons in the water and others preparing scuba diving equipment for the master. She asked the chief officer if a boat was coming to transport the deckhand to shore. At this point, the chief officer departed for the bridge to coordinate the shore response and passed the medical response efforts to the nurse and on scene command to the master. The nurse requested that all medical equipment from the bridge be brought to the swim platform and ran to the bridge to collect the automatic external defibrillator, AED. When the nurse returned with the AED, she immediately commenced preparing the AED and medical oxygen. At this time, she also prepared an airway device in anticipation of treating an unconscious person. While the deck hand was being recovered, but still in the water, the nurse made a visual assessment of his condition. Once the deck hand was recovered to the swim platform, the nurse immediately commenced administering medical oxygen. She instructed another crew member to attach the AED while she managed the deck hand's airway. CPR was also commenced. While oxygen was being administered and CPR performed, the AED went through a number of analytic cycles. After each analysis, the AED reported no shock, indicating that there was no detection of an abnormal heart rhythm. With the nurse's agreement, the decision was made to move the deckhand to the yacht's tender for transfer to shore. The deckhand was placed on a backboard, moved to the tender and taken to shore to meet the ambulance arranged by the chief officer. Seven minutes had elapsed between the deckhand being recovered onto the yacht and the tender leaving for shore. The transfer to shore took approximately three minutes. Under the supervision of the nurse, CPR and oxygen were maintained throughout the transfer. On arrival at the shore, there was approximately five minute wait for the ambulance to arrive. CPR and oxygen continued to be administered by the crew. When the ambulance arrived, the nurse briefed the paramedics and doctor in attendance and the deckhand was handed over to their care. Once transferred to the care of the shoreside medical responders, the deckhand was intubated while sedatives and a paralytic were administered intravenously. After approximately five minutes, of care in the ambulance, the monitors in the ambulance detected a pulse and the deckhand was then transferred to a local hospital's intensive care unit. Okay, nature of injuries sustained. The deckhand sustained severe hypoxic brain injuries caused by the lack of oxygen and blood to the brain while he was underwater. A MRI scan carried out at the hospital in Mallorca also revealed a small fracture of the right orbit of his skull. The most likely cause of this fracture is that he was hit on the head by the fender hook when he fell. Although a safety helmet would not have fully protected the face, had the deck hand been wearing one when the accident occurred, the effects of being struck in the area may have been reduced. On admission to the hospital in Parma, the deck hand spent 11 days in intensive care units before being transferred to a hospital in the UK. On transfer to a UK hospital, he spent a further 34 days in intensive care unit. Although the deckhand made progress in his rehabilitation following the accident, he continued to require 24 hour care. On the 7th of June, 2017, the deckhand died of bronchial pneumonia, brought on by his immobility following the accident. Very, yeah, so finally it was a very sad uh, loss of life. Um, if, you, if you don't know, you know, under 
certain maritime legislations, using a fender hook is not um, considered to be, um, you know, following the regulations. You'll be using things like pad eyes, uh, which are fitted to the to the vessel and are load tested regularly. You'll be using a thing called uh, Harken rails, which are rails you slide along, which also get load tested and um, certified as well. Um, the use of fender hooks, um, I guess, was more for, you know, uh, probably practicality. Sometimes the design of these yachts can be quite tricky to work over the side. And possibly they've done it hundreds of times before. And, you know, there was no risk. He had a harness on. Um, you know, they did follow the permits to work and all it takes is that one mistake and, uh, you know, losing your footing and if the fender hook's not correctly positioned, falling overboard. Uh, but ultimately, you know, the fender hook shouldn't have been used. It's easy to say now. Um, and, you know, we do, sometimes we can get into bad habits without really taking this into consideration the, the risks. The important thing about these accident reports is that as crew, and especially new crew and existing crew, we learn from them to make sure these mistakes don't happen again. Um, you know, we learn now that whenever, it, you know, whenever I have on AWOL, you know, crew working aloft, they're always wearing a helmet, they're always wearing, you know, safety harness, they're always wearing rubber shoes. And if working over the side, in addition to that equipment, also wearing a buoyancy aid and or life jacket. And this is down to, unfortunately, this accident. Um, so it's important to keep everybody aware of these accidents, to talk about it and to ensure it doesn't happen again. It was a very sad loss of life. So uh, condolences to um, this young man's family, uh, to his friends and also to his colleagues. So guys, we're gonna end the video there. I look forward to seeing you next time. See you and ciao.